Tips for beginners. Break through the middle of a desert temple to land in the water. If you jump on leaves, you won't take fall damage. The best layer to mine diamonds is Y20. Put a netherite block in a shulker to make it fire resistant. Hold a feather when falling to fall slower. Click Q on a cactus to upgrade your diamond tools to netherite. In hardcore mode, hot cheese will heal you. Hug creepers to gain XP. Make sure to share these with new players to help them out. The best Minecraft tips for beginners. When you're in the nether, make sure to get hit by a fireball. It will give you the fire resistance effect. It won't work every time, so make sure to keep on trying. If you see an enderman, look in their eyes and they'll give you lots of ender pearls. If you're free falling and don't want to die, instead of trying an MLG water, do an MLG milk. You'll have a 50% higher chance of landing it. Make sure to share this with all the Minecraft beginners. Let's make your life a little easier. The best. Did you know that the creator of Minecraft had a dead brother that was coded into the game and would allegedly haunt your save file? Or at least that's what the hero Brian Legend was speculating and it was driving Notch, Minecraft's creator, absolutely crazy. You see, Hero Brian was a creepy pasta of a creature in Minecraft that looked just like Minecraft Steve, but with a ghostly blank stare who would stalk your character from a distance and do some weird things in your world like creating crosses and removing all the leaves from the trees. The story got so popular that thousands of videos and posts were being shared online, all claiming that they had proof that Hero Brian was haunting their single player world. And Mojang originally got involved with the story at a point because Notch thought the idea was cool enough to consider adding into the game. He would even include removed Hero Brian from some of the patch notes just to poke fun at the story. But as time went on, Notch got even more annoyed by the story of Hero Brian because it was getting to be a little too much. He was getting constantly flooded with tweets and emails all asking him about his dead brother, which wasn't even real to begin with. But it got to the point where Notch finally caved in and tweeted out saying, fine, Hero Brian is real and he gains spooky vengeance haunting power whenever you remind me of him. Did you know that the creator of Minecraft- Minecraft goats are finally useful, because with four goat horns and a crafting table, we can craft the new ram block, which when attached to a sticky piston, can be used to break blocks automatically. You can even use it to damage enemies and knock them back. Or if you take those goat horns and combine it with copper, we can craft this new barbaric helmet, which when you wear it, gives you increased speed and strength when your health bar gets low. But by far the weirdest feature happens when you breed a goat with a sheep. And what happens then? Alright, we'll make a deal. You click on that subscribe button, I'll click on the sheep. Ready? Go. And doing this will give us the new goat sheep hybrid called the Geep. Weird name, but it's a mod that'll give us both wool, goat meat, and can even be milked like a cow, which all makes it so that Minecraft goats are finally useful because the four goat horns. Minecraft, but emotions <gasps> are hearts. So any emotion I feel, <gasps> a village oh. gives me its heart. And my only goal is to feel every emotion in the game. At this village, I got surprised, <gasps> disgust, and rage. That's <laughs> it. Uh, in this cave, I found a crap ton more. But how am I supposed to get scared? I'm not afraid of anything. <gasps> well, now all that's left. How many emotions are there? There's no way you'll be able to feel all of these emotions on my own. Uh -uh. I'm not the only one that can feel emotion! I can get all these piglets excited with gold! <laughs> Terrifying both these eggmen was easy! And I can make this villager nervous with a talent show! <laughs> what? Uh, How if I just make the entire world mad? Uh, you know, I'm starting to think I might be an idiot. Oh, there's gotta be some way to make everything happy again! Wait, I got it! Oh. Minecraft, but emotions! Hiya, I'm here for the patch job. Oh yeah, it's just up there. Oh, what was she doing this time? Oh. Aquinas, why would you do that? No! Who even plays Bedrock Edition? I've gotten this comment a lot when I talk about Bedrock, and it's so stupid since most people play Bedrock Edition. And that makes sense since Java can only be played on a computer, but Bedrock can be played on almost anything. Bedrock is simply much more accessible than Java since a ton of people don't have computers but do have phones or consoles. Also, Java is coded in a much laggier language which is why phones are able to run Bedrock but some computers can barely run Java. And as much as it pains me, a mainly Java player, to say this, Bedrock Edition is the main form of Minecraft. You can tell this because when you buy Java, you also get Bedrock for free, but if you buy Bedrock, you don't get Java. Also, when you launch Java, the logo says Minecraft Java Edition, but on Bedrock, the logo just says Minecraft. And Bedrock is the main version of Minecraft since it's so much more monetized than Java. On Java, once you buy it, there are barely any ways to spend more money. But on Bedrock, there are thousands of things for you to buy. Now you don't have to ask, who even plays? There's a brand new map showcasing Minecraft 1.21 and it's well. 
Interesting. This map is beautiful and stunning, but we're just gonna ignore the fact that half of it is a desert, huh? What do you mean? Moving around this area at one end of the map, we have this giant pyramid that slowly, as you start to finish things, kind of fills in at the top. Meanwhile, in the other direction, we've got this big giant town. Now, the point of this map, officially known as Breezy Peaks, the point here is to showcase a bunch of the cool things added to Minecraft in the 1.21 update. There are five different main quests that you can check out and tons of other small random things that you'll be able to find around the world. And speaking of around the world, I mean, this thing is pretty large. There are a lot of things that are kind of strange inside the map. Who even played? There's a brand new map. Meanwhile, in the other direction, we've got this big giant town. Now, the point of this map, officially known as Breezy Peaks, the point here is to showcase a bunch of the cool things added to Minecraft in the 1.21 update. There are five different main quests that you can check out and tons of other small random things that you'll be able to find around the world. As speaking of around the world, I mean, this thing is pretty large. There are a lot of things that are kind of strange inside the map. One of them <laughs> being this buddy right here. What in the world? For a longer, more in-depth look at the map, tap the video on screen and tap like right now. There's new enchantments to the maze. But why would we make a weapon that can already kill the Ender Dragon in one hit even stronger? Because... Well, why not? Deal more damage when falling with density! Penetrate enemy armor with breach! Knock foes farther back and launch yourself in the air with wind burst! Enchant your mace now in Java Snapshot! Minecraft, but emotions are hearts. All right, all right, all right, yeah. Take that. Die. Die. Okay, we okay. Whoa, I spawned you. I own you. Whoa, why are you chasing me? Hey, I spawned you. I own you. Whoa. All right, all right. This is how we make our invisible katana videos. Now many of you think that it's not real, but it's literally on our website through the link in our bio. So the way it works is I pretend to slice with my invisible katana while green screen man splits my target in half. And after it's all put together, it ends up looking a little bit something like this. Pretty one. <laughs> this is how we- I moved- Since the dawn of Minecraft, players have discovered numerous pieces of evidence leading back to ancient civilizations. Yet the questions remain, are these real? But now with the new 1.21 update, we finally have an answer. Whose faces are on the trial chamber vaults? Are the Breeze and Blazes history somehow connected? We're solving Minecraft's ancient civilization mysteries, starting with buried deep underground. In update 1.21 is the trial chambers, full of new mysteries. But right next to it is the trail ruins. Were these two part of the same civilization? And if so, who built them? These structures were just added in the latest version of Minecraft with a new mob and new challenges to beat. But what I am much more concerned about is how a structure so deep underground is completely intact. No damage, no block is missing. And when you compare it to things like mine shafts and strongholds, it looks very unique. Maybe it has something to do with the blocks it's made out of. This copper, tough bricks, are they just stronger than wood and stone? And then there are these pots. Before this update, pots were only ever found on the surface in the overworld, and here they are, so deep underground, not damaged in the slightest. How is any of this connected? to the trail ruins. These structures are much more difficult to investigate, but immediately standing out to me is while both structures, the trial chambers and the trail ruins are underground, take a look at these paths, take a look at these buildings. These are totally falling apart. They have been completely destroyed. The obvious thing that I notice is the difference in materials. While the trial chambers are primarily copper, here, 
clay is the main base, right? We have mud, which makes clay. We have bricks made out of clay. And then we have terracotta, which is a variant of clay as well as glaze. Yes, clay is weaker, but enough to have the entire mountain collapse in on it? Actually, speaking of suspicious, I guess there is technically loot here. It's just not found in pots. It's found inside suspicious gravel. And here we also find pottery shells. So they used to be pots here, just like the ones we found in the trial chambers. So if they have similar loot, then why do they look so different? Curious, I began searching online for more information on how these structures came to be. I found this Reddit post from Phoenix SC showing us unreleased concept art that Mojang made for the trial chambers. Why was it unreleased? I don't really know, but what stands out immediately, the main supports are actually made out of wood beams. There is carpet, it's open, it's roomy, it's light, we've got bookshelves. And there's even this banner with some sort of pattern. I'm not quite sure what that is. Let me know in the comments below if you know what that is, because I feel like it could be important. Oh wait, this was the vault? This is so much less scary than the vaults we actually got. This doesn't look ominous at all. And then it ended up literally getting called the ominous vault. What about this one? This is the most recent concept art. We still have that red carpet and these redstone torches. What I'm noticing is Mojang's original ideas for these chambers were way more homey. Almost like it was made by villagers. I mean, look at the block choice. These are the shapes of the villager houses. And thinking about those houses, those buildings in the trail ruins look like villager houses as well. If the buildings and the loot both match what you would find in a village, I think it's pretty safe to say that villagers did used to live in these ruins. And since there's evidence that these are connected to the chambers, then villagers must have lived there as well. But why did they leave? Wait, this building. I've spoken about this in a previous video. In fact, we had a whole theory about this when researching... With Walmart Plus Assist, you get all the benefits of Walmart Plus for half the price, like free delivery. Watching these trail ruins, we discovered that this was the exact same building as a pillager outpost, showing that actually pillagers and villagers used to live in peace in these structures. What does that have to do with the chambers? I reckon we can confirm that villagers used to live in these chambers. After all, we can find the beds they would have slept in. Tons of pots filled with their emeralds. That makes sense, but what about pillagers? There are no shapes, no blocks, no structures that match the pillager outposts. I mean, usually they're made of wood, such as the outpost tower or the woodland mansion. What if the vaults have something connected to the pillagers? Maybe that has something reason to do with why the vaults are locked. Let's see what we can get from the inside. Iron, wind charges, more iron, an ominous bottle. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure, guys, this new item gives you the bad omen. Do you get bad omen? There it is. The same bottle you get from killing the pillager captains. That's our first connection. See? The outpost being in the ruins is one thing. After all, both are abandoned. And yet the one with bad omen is still okay. It hasn't fallen. Would the pillagers actually still be using this structure to this day? Why take over this place at the start? What advantage does it give them? Watch until the end of the video to find out the truth. But for now, let's focus on this new mob. The breeze and its connection to the blades. Could these mobs actually have been part of a common world, a common civilization? And if so, what are the other variants that exist? Looking at the breeze, it is so obvious to all of us what it looks and sounds like. It's a blaze. Surely they must be connected somehow. I mean, it could just be that they do look similar, except I think it is a whole lot more than that. And it starts with their loot. Breezes obviously drop breeze rods. Blazes blaze rods. Their loots are the same. You can't deny that they must be related somehow. But it goes even further than that. If I combine blaze rods into blaze powder, then mix that with coal and gum powder, we're going to get fire charges. What can you craft with breeze rods? Well, it just so happens 
you get wind charges. A fire charge and a wind charge. Yes, there are a few more steps for the fire charges, but at the end of the day, they're the same. Maybe one mob became the other. This isn't actually a foreign concept to Minecraft. In fact, there are many mobs with different varieties. We have the slimes and then the fiery friend, the magma cube. But that's not all. We have the regular pig, which we all know and love. And then many years later, the hoglin was added. Look at these two things side by side. They are variations. One thing for sure is that there is only one of me. Or is there? Because now with my brand new skin pack, anyone can also become me. Or even my friends. Just head over to the Minecraft Marketplace, search for EY Stream and friends. Hit that Minecoin button, go to the dressing room, and you can equip the skin of any one of us. If only figuring out this mystery was as easy as it is to get my skin pack. Here, we can clearly see there are nether variants of these mobs, but it gets a bit more confusing when you add in the skeleton, the only mob that has more than one variant. You have the skeleton, the bogged, and the stray, except none of these are nether variants. Ugh. This one throws a spanner and the whole works. I commenced my research, scrolling through hundreds of random forums about players' theories on the Breeze's connection with the Blaze. Most were just fan fiction, but some seemed to hold the key. Fans instantly made this connection between the Blaze and the Breeze too, and began sketching what the other variants of these mobs would look like. We've got a water one here, the brine, or I'm assuming for Earth. What I found really interesting was this one, which actually linked the different mobs to the different elements. And this never occurred to me, but we actually have paintings for each of the different elements in Minecraft. And these were added in the last update. So does that mean we're going to get these brine and gold in future updates? And then it got even crazier with realizing that, hey, the blaze is used to make Eyes of Ender. What if there are different elemental versions of the Eyes of Ender? One thing for sure though, is that both the blaze and breeze are always and only ever found in structures. But why? I then remembered one of the most Introducing Milo's Rewards, the new way to unlock savings from the palm of your hand. With every purchase, all loyalty helpful guides we've ever used in these investigation videos. The Mob Bestiary, Mojang's official book, detailing every single one of Minecraft's mobs to their very core. Surely that would give me the information I need on the blaze, or at least a clue. Unfortunately, this book was published well before the breeze was ever added to the game, or even before it was announced to the public. However, it does have a deep dive on the Blaze, and I'm hoping there's gotta be a connection in here somewhere. Blaze fights fights from a distance, bombarding its foes with fireballs. Yeah, we know that. Maybe something about the structures? Wait, read this, guys. The Blaze does not spontaneously exist in the Nether. It is conjured into existence by a sauna, seemingly programmed to protect Nether fortresses from any intruder. I never thought about that before. Blazes don't actually spawn naturally. And neither do breezes. They also were programmed to protect the trial chambers. Protect them from what? But then what about the other elemental variants? If there was a water element, then surely that spawner would be found in an ocean monument. And then the earth one, would that be in a desert temple or a jungle? Theoretically, it could be either. But if these spawners were placed inside the structures to protect the civilization living there, what happened to the other structures, to those civilizations? Where did everyone go? Did they all die? Or something darker? And if you think that is mysterious, what if the face of an ancient civilization is actually carved onto the new vaults? And what if that civilization is still alive, living inside of them? Earlier in the video, we used this same trial key to secure the loot inside the vault. But it's actually not the only key. This is the ominous key, which is much, much rarer and can only drop from ominous trial spawners that look just like 
this one. But these aren't just hard up because they spawn more mobs. They get the name Ominous from spawning mobs with the brand new oozing and infested effects, which make them much stronger and harder to defeat, which is why they give much better loot as well as this key. Not to mention this key's face is like 10 times scarier looking. Dude, it's literally got like three heads. This looks like a face. It looks like three faces. <laughs> and then when we get closer to it, its mouth opens wide. It clearly is a face. Yes, it could just be a machine, but watch what happens when I go to unlock it. Do you see that? Look at those orange particles. They are being sucked inside. It's almost like the vault is calling to us as if it's alive. But if that's the case, shouldn't these vaults be able to do more than just give us loot? I think that there's more information than meets the eye. This guide, which goes through everything new in this update, also mentions the vaults, saying that once you've used your key, it will no longer open for you anymore. But an unlimited amount of other people who haven't used the vault can still use the key, even if it is the same key. Let's just confirm we aren't getting clickbaited here. I'm literally in creative mode as well, so I should theoretically be able to reuse this block. I've used it, I've got the loot, and yet nothing. Its mouth isn't even opening anymore. It's the same thing with this one too. But I think I have an idea to trick this. Let's clear our inventory and then fly far enough away so that it should de-render. Then I'm going to click F3 and T on my keyboard, which will reload all of the chunks in the world. So that should refresh that block. Then we'll grab ourselves a completely brand new ominous key. So surely the block is refreshed. And yet look, it still doesn't open. Look, I'm clicking. No other block operates like this. Only entities do living things. Some might say it's just how the game was designed so that every player would evenly get the loot. But what if there is a much deeper reason? What if it can remember? I mean, it has eyes, it has a mouth. I reckon it's alive. I think it can remember players that it's seen before. So then why does it give us loot? Wait a minute. Earlier before, one of the loots we got, which was really important, was the ominous bottle. And earlier, we theorized that the pillagers and villagers were somehow involved in these trial chambers. What if Bad Omen is actually much more important than we originally thought? Maybe it's the glue that connects these living vaults to how the pillagers managed to take over these trial chambers. It's all coming together. Now, let's look back into the trail ruins and trial chambers. I came back to the exact same question. Why are the pillagers trying to take over the trial chambers and vaults? Was Bad Omen the answer? For a minute, consider what the ominous bottle actually does. It gives you Bad Omen which when you walk into a village, you begin to see these particle effects during its grace period before finally activating a ray. It calls all the pillagers to this location and they will begin to spawn and start attacking. Three, two, one. There it is. We put out a message to them almost. Why would the pillagers just place their own messages inside vaults? Unless the pillagers put the bad omen here on purpose. Isn't it obvious? The villagers built these chambers. Then the pillagers infiltrated them, put the bad omen inside these vaults. And when the villagers went to get their loot, they would get the ominous bottle, drink it, thinking it was good and return home, telling the pillagers exactly where they are. And wait, it gets even crazier than that. When you go to villagers, the cartographer villagers will sell you maps leading you to the trial chambers. Do those villagers work for the pillagers? Or have they been luring themselves into a trap this entire time without realizing it? 
It's the same reason some villages are abandoned. Those are places where villagers have brought the ominous trials to them. But then wait, why are all these... Why would the villagers put mob spawners in their own homes? That, that doesn't make any sense. Unless... I know for a fact that if I spawn a villager, these two will attack him and kill him. But what happens if I spawn a pillager? Nothing. At all. This entire thing is a trap. They turn the villager's own home, own structure into a giant trap. Oh my gosh. The trail ruins. It's all connected. The villagers would have brought Bad Omen back to their homes in the trail ruins, which caused them to get completely destroyed, abandoned, and slowly, over time, fall beneath the ground because villagers killed them all. Does that mean that pillagers are done and dusted with the chambers? They've set up their traps and now they just never come back here anymore? Or is there some much darker secret that we have yet to discover? But what I still can't wrap my head around, does the Nether Bastion actually hold a dark secret about its ancient creators? To understand this strange structure, we first need to understand more about the mobs that live here, the piglins. You see, there are lots of mobs in the nether, and they all share one thing in common. The magma cube doesn't burn in lava. The wither skeleton doesn't burn in lava. And the strider, it's totally fine, and yet the piglin, even though it lives in the lava, burns to death. In fact, they are the only mobs found in the nether that take fire damage. I mean, technically there are skeletons and endermen, but those actually came from the overworld first. Wait a minute. Maybe piglins are the same. Maybe they were never from the nether in the first place, but then who are these piglins and where did they come from? Wait, I just realized something. There's two types of them. There's also the piglin brute. So they have different jobs in the nether. You know the only other mob that has different jobs? Villagers. And you can trade with villagers and you can trade with piglins. So could piglins be made from villagers? Oh, but I don't know about that, Chief, because the villager doesn't look anything like the piglins. So if they didn't come from villagers, where did they come from? Reddit might have the answer because this user supports our suspicions that piglins have never been in the nether. They never came from there at all, but they take it a step further and say they don't even own the Bastion Remnant. Apparently it was originally built by what he calls ancient builders. But believe it or not, this person's not the only one. It's actually a popular theory that the ancient builders were early versions of Steve and Alex that lived in Minecraft and built many of the structures we know today. These things are huge. Why bother building them? And what were the ancient builders even doing in the nether? I mean, these things are all built out of nether blocks, so it doesn't really make that much sense unless, wait, the chests. <gasps> these are all nether blocks as well. Bone, obsidian, gold, and arrows. They need feathers. You can only get those in the overworld, but oh no, skeletons are in the
nether, so you could get it from skeletons. String and banner patterns, which require paper. Both of these you can only find in the overworld. But then again, maybe the piglins just raided someone and stole this loot. I need more proof. Lanterns, this is the proof. You craft these using iron, and iron's only found in the overworld where the ancient builders literally lived, and the only other structures with lanterns are the trail ruins. And the trail ruins are literally old archaeological sites built by the ancient ruins. That's confirmed by Mojang. So is this the same? Wait, I just realized something. If we use the command slash locate structure and put in the bastion, you notice it's not just called a bastion, it's called a bastion remnant. The word remnant means destroyed structure, which I mean, these things are pretty ruined. They've got holes all over them. But if the piglins lived here, why wouldn't they fix it unless they never built it in the first place? While I dug deeper into the nether bastion's origins, I stumbled upon another myth. Did wardens actually come from axolotls? And if they do, why? The warden is a prisoner of the deep dark. And an axolotl is just an adorable little creature. So how could this ever be true unless... Wait, why isn't the warden attacking the axolotl? This might not seem strange initially until you realize that I'm pretty certain any other mob the warden will beat to death. I mean, he doesn't seem to be at the moment. Unless, no, he's definitely mad. Look at him, he's going straight for the ship. Instantly dead. The axolotl was just chilling there. He, he didn't care. I'll spawn more axolotls in. And he doesn't care. He goes straight for the spider. Why doesn't the warden attack the axolotl? Unless there actually is some sort of historic connection between the warden and the axolotl. Or is this just a random glitch left in the game by Mojang? I need more evidence. So I began searching for every and any similarities that might exist between these two creatures. And that led me to here, the official Minecraft launcher. We're looking for a small feature at the bottom left called what's new, where Mojang has put every single change ever added to Minecraft. And I'm looking through here because apparently reports claim there is a terrifying message about the axolotl hidden on the same day that the warden was added to Minecraft, the 25th of March, 2021. MSA sign in, fixed an issue, fixed an issue. Two games, one launches, thus never shown. And what is this? Th there was nothing about the axolotl in any of this. And then there's just this random gibbity glop. Unless, no, I've seen this before. Guys, do you recognize this? It's the same language Minecraft uses for the enchantment table and the end crystals. Oh, but I can't translate that. But I know someone who can. I have a friend who works at Mojang, and I'm pretty sure they have a tool there that allows them just to translate anything in this language into English. Okay, I'm gonna send him a message, but what kind of secret message is hidden in that line? Maybe it tells us about how the axolotls created the warden or how they're related? But hours later, my doorbell rang. Confused and nervous, I made my way downstairs and answered the door. There's no one out here. Wait, is that a letter? It's addressed to me, what? Strange, I don't really get mail ever. Let's see, what do we What do we got inside? Mojang? Did they find out about what I'm doing here? Hi Jordan. No, 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 this is bad. I hope this letter finds you well. I have received your text, but I couldn't risk replying online. Wait, this is my text to my friend. Why didn't he just text me back? Due to safety concerns, as this information is sensitive and I'm not legally allowed to share it. This message translates to the axolotls are not what they seem. I advise you to be careful while investigating this. There was a deeper reason why Mojang doesn't want to publicly reveal this. To understand what this means, invert the image attached to this letter. The image is a concept art released by Mojang before the Warden was added to Minecraft. Sincerely, James. Wait, he said concept art attached to this letter? What do you mean attached? Is there something else in here that I missed? It's another thing. What? What is it? What? This is official Mojang concept art, Axolotl and the Warden. Why would they even put the Axolotl and Warden together in concept art in the first place? They have nothing to do with each other. Even more concerning, why was this so secretive that James literally had to send me a letter and he wasn't able to just text it to me? I really hope James is okay, but 
whatever's happening to him. We owe it to him to get to the bottom of this mystery. So I scanned the image into my computer so we could go ahead and edit it. He said we had to invert it. I opened it up in Photoshop. I think we come to layer and then new adjustment layer, invert. That's, that's exactly what he asked for, right? Okay, and activate it. What is that supposed to show us? I mean, the, the water looks pink and the axolotl looks dark, bluey, green. I turn it off. The axolotls are pink. The wardens are this green color, light green. And then when we turn it on, they swap colors. What is that supposed to mean? This can't be a coincidence. Mojang added this on purpose. I mean, why are axolotls in this concept art anyways? Is it to hide that axolotls are secretly something greater than just cute animals? Maybe the ancient city portal isn't actually the face of a warden, but the face of an axolotl. What is Mojang hiding from us? Do you know? And if you thought that was strange, you won't believe where Endermen actually come from. This theory is out there. I mean, Endermen have nothing in common with us. They are a lot taller and they have teleportation powers. And wait, something I forgot is they can also move blocks. In fact, they're the only entity besides Steve and Alex that can do that. Maybe there is more to this theory. Hold up. Guys, am I tripping? Or did that Enderman just talk to me? That sound he made. Rewind the video. It sounded like a word. Actually, I've seen this before. He's gone. I think I saw a video from MatPat where they had a similar theory claiming that the Enderman can talk, but then what are the Endermen saying? I need a way to somehow listen back to what he said. And this month, we got this Yeti dog bowl completely free. Two toys, two treats, and a surprise. Off only $22. How is this even possible? These boys in like slow motion. I went back through this entire video to clip out the two times the Enderman made a sound. And this is what it sounds like. Okay, I can, I feel like I can hear something there. Maybe the other one is easier. It just moves too quick. It's too distorted. So if we take our tracks here and we put them into a mix down, which is basically like a multi-track and we'll zoom into the sound wave here. We should be able to grab the time tool and just extend it out. 200% slower, is that good? You know what, we'll go even further. 250% slower. Let's have a listen, see if we can hear anything. No way. Rewind the video. It literally said hello. Wait, editor, put up subtitles again so you guys can see it. Watch. Hello. There's no way that's real. There's
saying hello? I mean, no, no, Enderman can't talk. This has to be a coincidence, right? To figure out if this sound is just a coincidence, I googled the commands for every sound possible in Minecraft that an Enderman can make. So if we use the command slash play sound, and then it's called custom idle one, and we'll put that in the ambient track for all players to hear in this location at 100 volume, one pitch. Let's listen. Hey, he said, hey, he said, hey. All we need to do to go through the different Enderman sounds is we'll change it to two. That was the one that we heard when we were looking in our audio software. It says, hello. Okay, and then the third one. What's up? It's true, it's true. The Endermen are talking back to us. But how? Because only humans can talk unless they are actually corrupted versions of us. Wait, we got to try it. I think there's another sound here. Let's try the fourth sound, see what it says. Look for the eye. But why would the Enderman tell us to look for the eye? What eye is it talking? about the eye of Ender. I've got it, I've got it. Endermen, there's some of them in the overworld, but most of them are in the end. What if that's where they were originally corrupted and they want us to free them? That's why they ask us to look for the eye to take us to the stronghold. I mean, it makes sense, but I'm still not fully convinced. My friend brought me these Asian veggies, but one of them isn't labeled. We're gonna use the Google app to find out what it is. So this is called choy sum, which is similar to bok choy. I need undeniable proof, but I've already read everything about the Enderman online, unless not everything is online. This is the Mobistiary, and I am certain it has all the answers that we're looking for. Why do I trust it? Because you see up there, Mojang. It has an official seal of approval from Mojang themselves. So it's not just made by some other, you know, random company out there. This is Mojang's Bible for everything mob related. And we've used it to solve mysteries on the channel before, which is why I trust it. I've never actually read about Enderman before. So let's see, Creeper, no, here we are. Earlier before I was looking through all of this information and to be honest, it was mostly the same as what I found on the internet, except this photo. I've never seen this before. Take a closer look right there. A brain. There is a brain in the Enderman. Now, if you don't realize how insane that is, maybe you should take a look at every other mob inside of this book. Zombie, no brain. Gas, look at the inside, no brain. There is in fact no other hostile mob that I could find in this entire book. Look, even the skeleton, no brain. Mojang took the specific decision to show that there is not a brain in any other hostile mob except for the Enderman and well, one other mob, which I'm sure you guys know, us, humans. But if Endermen are the same as us, then why do they get angry when we look at them? Are they jealous because we weren't also trapped in the end? Or is there a darker secret? After reaching a dead end, I return to my research on the Nether Bastions. Who built them? How were the piglins ever connected? Were they not actually originally born in the nether? But if the piglins aren't from the nether, then where are they from? Because in the overworld, they jitter and shake like this. And then after 25 seconds, they turn to a zombified piglin. There you have it. So what, can it not survive in the overworld unless... I just figured it out. Hold up, hold up. If we change the weather to the thunder, grab ourselves a trident and enchant this with a channeling book. And then what? We need to put a mob next to the pig. And if we strike this guy with lightning, did that work? No. Hold up. If we get the lightning, there it is. If you get lightning close enough to a pig, it turns into a zombified piglin. Hold up. Ready? Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Bang that pig just transformed. So then all of these creatures that are in the nether, they're corrupted versions of overworld pigs. So does that mean the ancient builders created the piglins out of ordinary pigs and brought them to the nether? But why? I needed to learn more about bastions. So I went to the official Minecraft wiki where I knew there were a couple of different types of bastions, but apparently there are literally hundreds of combinations. Why would the ancient builders build so many different types? Just like build the same thing like the desert temple, right? I mean, look, here's just bridges. There's just so many different types. I mean, I guess this makes sense because the nether is a dangerous place where the ancient builders needed ways to get around. But then they also had these things called housing units. Why would the ancient builders make houses for themselves in the nether? Why risk living in such a dangerous place? Unless these houses 
it weren't for them, but for the piglins. And that's why they've been left to be in disrepair. Hold up. I saw before Hoglin stables. And with Hoglin stables, they've basically created a source of food in the nether because they drop pork chop. It's like the perfect city for piglins to live inside of. Is that it? So we've got housing units, Hoglin stables, bridges. What else? Treasure room. Guys, what do these look like? Hold up. There's no way. There's no way. It all makes sense. I figured it out. Piglins are literally obsessive hoarders when it comes to gold. In fact, they trade with it. They even wear golden armor and their kids will go around stealing gold from players. But why? What if the ancient builders created these piglins and forced them to mine gold for them? I mean, it would make sense. The nether's filled with gold, it's extremely dangerous, and the ancient builders didn't want to risk dying, which means either I am crazy, or these piglins living inside of these remnants? These remnants aren't just cities. No, this is a giant prison for piglin slaves. Thank you to all of these guys for making today's video possible. You're my new favorite EY Mega fans. If you want a shout out, just click the join button below this video. Oh, yeah. gonna win. oh my gosh, guys, is that the diamond ender?